Welcome back to Ghoster Coasters, everybody. We've been itching to get back on some rides, and over the past week or two, we've been seeing some alarming things in the amusement park industry. Mm -hmm. So we're here to kind of address safety concerns and what's going on with Cedar Fair's maintenance team. Again, we understand accidents do happen all the time and have to be forgiving of those to some extent, but also this is about safety first and foremost. I've had friends text me about Fury 325, who don't even ride roller coasters asking about it. Asking if rides are safe and doing the, oh hell no, I'm not riding another ride again thing. Yep. And we're here to bring some peace of mind to it all and go over the Cedar Fair maintenance record as of late. So let's get cracking everybody. Now, the questions start to arise when you look at Top Thrill Dragster, and we're not going to touch much into the tragedy of it all. We just wish the family well and hope something like that never happens again. What ended up happening was that the bolts holding the flag plate onto the train had become compromised, and they eventually deteriorated from their hold integrity real quick. It was a rapid break, is what was essentially said in the report. But also, it's one of those one in a million things, as it's never happened before with a ride, so how could you really expect that to happen? We have to be fair, it's not entirely on one person or the maintenance team, but the alarming results from these accidents and incidents are something that need to be addressed with the highest concern and care going forward. The Ohio Department of Agriculture released a 620 page report explaining their investigation into Cedar Point's Top Thrill Dragster. Investigators said they did not find enough evidence to show that the amusement park violated any state laws. The ODA said the purpose of their investigation was not to determine the cause of the accident, just to make sure the amusement park followed all the laws in place to ensure the roller coaster's safety. The ODA said their investigation included a post-accident inspection of the ride, interviews with Cedar Point staff, a review of thousands of pages of maintenance records, witness reports, and lab reports. After all that, they say they found no evidence to indicate that Cedar Point knew the Top Thrill Dragster ride was unsafe or could cause a hazard to the public. Sticking on the peninsula of Cedar Point, we have one of the oldest operating coasters in the park, Corkscrew. Moving on to earlier in the season at Cedar Point, a whole piece of the wheel came off Corkscrew while riders were on the ride. The Ohio Department of Agriculture said they passed all roller coasters in the beginning of the season, but that it is the park's maintenance who is in charge of ensuring and inspecting the rides day to day. Pictures were sent to us almost immediately from the park and it spread like wildfire on the social pages as a piece of the wheel fell off onto the midway. The park did confirm a piece came off and it makes you wonder how a wheel could be in such bad shape that a piece of it would fly off. That could have potentially hit a guest. Thankfully no such thing happened and Cedar Point safety record has remained fairly good barring the last few years freaks accidents happening which yes some of that is just pure bad luck happening too finally this leads us to fury 325 brandon at theme park predictions is doing an amazing job keeping up with all the progress going on at fury essentially a few days ago on june 30th a guest noticed a massive crack in the fury support and reported it to guest service immediately the guest, Jeremy Wagner, shout out to that park guest because that definitely could have saved yeah. many lives in the long run. But another user noticed in her pictures from June 24th that the crack was starting to appear in her photos, but she hadn't noticed at the time. This is alarming considering the park put out a statement confirming that they do daily inspections of all rides before allowing them to open. So how was a crack this size missed? How were guests allowed to ride for almost a week unnoticed? Crazy. I think it may be time to review the protocols for clearing a ride because obviously a massive crack in the support structure was missed and the public was allowed onto the ride with a dangerous outcome looming. I think that's unacceptable from all areas of the industry and something we are all grateful that didn't end up much work. The ride was held intact very well by its safety features, and that's a testament to B&M, who is supposedly on site at Carowinds, inspecting the ride further and analyzing all the data in order to ensure we get this ride back up as quickly and safely as possible. Oh, yeah. We see workers walking the track, tons of people on the ground, and again, Theme Park Predictions has all the on-the-ground up-to-dates and is working to bring all updates on Fury every day. Shout out to Brandon. So what happened with the weld? Well, as far as we know, the weld design wasn't very good to begin with, and Mentored Engineer does a great job over on his channel breaking down the FEA safety and ANSI guidelines. Essentially, we have a grade D or E weld there where the two support columns meet, and he offered up a few ways to fix that. Either adding more weld to the bevel, making the weld thicker so the stress point isn't as fine, or making the weld bigger, meaning spreading the weld out over a larger distance in order to minimize the stress on one point in the weld. 
He mentions beveling the end of the tube which meets the support structure in order to get in deeper with the weld and increasing the weld size entirely. He also mentioned adding more to the plate that connects to the track to support all the way to the 45 degree tube meeting the support column standing vertically. It looks like the ride will be down for just a little bit longer. I'm not much of a timeline person here, but my guess would be probably by Scarewind's time maybe. They are working fast, so time will tell, and they do say that, you know, B&M can get it done here in a few months, and... I hope so. That's a few months, I would say, you know, August, September, October, I mean... I, I would love to get down there for Scarewind's. So. It'd be cool to ride Fury at Scarewind's too, so yeah, it's let's just... favorite ride. Yeah, let's hope they get it done. It's my number one too. Now, after having said all of this, Cedar Fair seems to be taking things very seriously since the incident at Carowinds. A report surfaced from Cedar Point that Gatekeeper was experiencing an issue with their support. Cedar Point had workers on site immediately and the ride, as far as I know from the park and other park goers, is that it was not a crack and the ride reopened to the public immediately. Glad to see the park taking things so seriously and vigorously attending to the issues as the news down in Charlotte did say that there wasn't much urgency to shutting down the ride when the crack was first noticed. That is true. So this begs the question, just how safe are roller coasters? Of the 308 operating amusement parks in the US and more across the world, how do they ensure guests are safe while riding? Let's dive into this. Each morning, parks across the country send maintenance teams out to inspect the rides, trains, all operating pieces of a coaster in order to ensure safety and that everything is in working order before morning tests. Afterwards, parks run the coaster and check for any abnormalities in the operating systems before finally clearing a ride for takeoff, sending guests up, up, and away on a coaster adventure. Whee. So why are we hearing so much about amusement park safety these days? According to the National Safety Council, there is roughly 3.7 injuries per million guests at an amusement park and 0.8 injuries per 1 million riders on an attraction. These numbers, when compared to even driving your car, are miraculously low, and it makes you wonder why it seems so prevalent in the amusement industry the past few years with all the accidents happening at what seems to be an alarming rate. But you are absolutely more likely to be injured driving to the amusement park than you are at an amusement park. True. And you know that little relaxing shower you took today? You're also a little more likely to injure yourself with a fall in the shower than you are on an amusement ride. They follow all the state laws, ASTM international safety standards, and they have independent third-party inspection. Yes, freak accidents occur, but the overwhelming likelihood is that the amusement park you are visiting is safe, and that every ride has been inspected to its fullest to ensure your safety while you are attending the park. Nobody wants to see an injury or accident occur, and I think we all need to realize this when blaming others for the example in the Fury incident. Yes. It's unacceptable, but again, nobody showed up to work hoping to find a crack and let the ride run all day. Nobody. And I'm sure the whole entire crew and team feel extremely grateful that nothing more happened. Serious. Let's take a moment to realize the life we're gifted. The fun times we get to have on the awesome engineering feats, and of course, be grateful for all the crew members working rigorously to find out what happened to Fury 325. Yes. So, how are you guys feeling about the Cedar Fair maintenance teams right now? How things have been going lately for all the parks around the world? I know there's been some pretty serious incidents that we're not going to necessarily point out, but there's been some serious things. So, how are you guys feeling about going to amusement parks at this point? And why does it feel like more accidents have occurred lately than over the past few years prior? Uh, it's one of those things that we definitely kind of, you know, wonder about, but... Again, it's a microcosm of things like when something bad happens, it's going to spread like wildfire, it's going to be all over the news. But when the good things happen, all the safety things happen, all the safety records are achieved, they don't really highlight that. That's just kind of no. something the park highlights, but the news doesn't. I also think the fact that we have social media. Yeah, yeah, it spreads like wildfire really quickly. So fast. And you just hear a whole bunch of opinions about things and it makes it harder for cover ups. Yeah, and people don't really they don't know what they're talking about all the time and they jump to conclusions. Yes. So it's one of those things we gotta be careful with. But make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, drop a comment down below and let us know how you're feeling about all of this and of course thanks for being a part of this spooky community and for coaster, coaster ghosting, ghosting with, with ghoster coasters. coasters stay safe my friends